Cabela's, they hunt. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ross, founder of Siege Media, and today we're gonna to talk about Cabela's on our second episode of Content Marketing Takedowns. So Cabela's is an outdoor retailer. They offer a lot of different products in fishing, outdoor, camping, et cetera. Um, so they, they, they've got a widespread, they have some physical retail locations as well, and overall have a pretty well-known brand in this space, but aren't doing super swimmingly from a content marketing or search perspective. They're pretty flat. And I think it was worth diving into what they're doing and what they might be doing wrong that is impacting their ability to grow, at least from an organic standpoint, uh, in the last couple of years. So one thing that stands out uh, almost immediately in just looking at their site is their information architecture. It's just kind of confusing in terms of the shop versus learn. It's actually one of the first experiences I've ever seen that emphasizes learn and also their discounts over a more traditional shopping nav where you could jump to the fishing section or the camping section more clearly. And as a content marketer, it's awesome to see that section emphasized so clearly, but I, I don't know that that is always a great idea in terms of actually impacting the bottom line, which is content marketers should be our overall goal for our clients. So if you look at their section, they have this clear content breakdown as you see here. You scroll down and they actually have even more articles as well um, in their articles and information section. And what's strange is that these are actually different, different article inventories. So they actually have a pretty robust list of articles. As you can see, they have 32 pages worth of these types of articles on their site. And these are completely different than what you actually find in the nav. You can see the setup and the look of these articles. And then you go to here and you go to uh, an article in this section, you can see it's designed completely different. And by no means am I endorsing this just for the record, but for the, it's the, for the purposes of le learning some SEO and content marketing best practices, um, some kind of instructive things in this section. So you can see in camping and other areas, it, it just looks different. And what this means overall is I have the feeling they started down one path and then started down another, and now they have two completely different content inventories that are contributing to overall indexation bloat, which I think is pulling down their overall site. So you can see in looking at this section, they have thousands upon thousands of articles uh, generally. And when, they, when I just search article in addition to Cabela's, you can see that total number. And when you have articles that really do nothing for you, that's pulling down the more important articles on your site. The domain authority is basically a math equation, as far as I understand it anyways, that if you have, a thousand links and it's only divided by 100 pages versus 10,000 pages, that equity is more equally distributed and heavily distributed at that 100 pages you really care about. So by having 10,000, and in their case even more, of articles that likely do nothing for them, that's pulling heavily away from the articles that they care about um, most often. So that's not a good thing and Cabela's should not be taking um, that kind of effort. And if you see, if you look on their setup overall, not a great aesthetic. It's also really small font. I pull this into a Google Doc. And you can see it's actually nine pixels as compared to 18 as a best practice, if not higher. We generally suggest at minimum 16. You can see this is very hard on the eyes and not easy for, for any marketer to read or person to read, period. Uh, and that's gonna impact their overall content marketing efforts um, as a company. So in their top article section, we just looked at their bottom article section. It's, it's much improved from an aesthetic standpoint. That's likely why they push towards it. But you can see it's still not ideal. They at least have some illustration here that makes it a little easier to read. But it's not on average a, a great aesthetic. It's a little bit larger font, but still not best practice in terms of 18 pixels or being scannable, easy to read, all of those good things uh, that you would expect from, from a great experience. So I think that is impacting them overall. And another thing in general about how they're laid out is information architecture, as we kind of touched on at the beginning, doesn't make a lot of sense. So one thing, if you look at their structure and you go to a fishing section, there's no articles here. You kind of disconnect, even if you go to soft baits in fishing, no real push to their, their blog posts, but you have to, you can go into learning and then go into fishing to learn more about that but it's not great from a structural standpoint. It's disconnected. 
It's not uh, in a silo. Those things can impact user experience and actually time on site, ability to actually stick with things. All of that can hurt your site overall. One setup I really like recently is REI. So comparatively, you look at their section and every single article category pushes to their content marketing section specific to that category. You see in their section, they have the expert advice area here that will actually take you to their expert advice area for fitness and running overall. That's gonna help them rank. It's gonna help users in a way that actually makes sense as compared to the Cabela setup where it doesn't uh, add any value um, at all. And that's one main reason that I think Cabela's is struggling. In our first video, we talked about overall content strategy for Dick's Sporting Goods and how they were doing a good job of tying to the beginner section of uh, learning a sport. And that's when people actually will purchase equipment very often. In Cabela's situation, I think one thing that's also contributing to their indexation bloat is they've kind of defined the outdoors as a decent enough category for, for ranking. And likely, I would guarantee almost that their broad swath of article topics, a one pot Dutch oven breakfast, is not actually compellingly tying into when someone would actually buy something. If you're, if you're just crushing it, I think you can maybe afford to go this broad and be the guy the, or the company that, that basically aims to rank for everything outdoors. But more realistically, this is not a strategy that is gonna convert very clearly for you. I think instead they should think about what are the things people are gonna search for before they actually buy a product in this kind of narrative. Yes, there's gonna be a lot of outdoor type activities within that, but by going as broad as, uh, as one, pot, one pot Dutch ovens or how to make snack sticks, that I don't think ties to a buying event for the outdoors or their overall product categories as neatly. I don't think it hurts to, always, to do that occasionally, but is an overall narrative to actually tie into when people are actually gonna buy and be able to retarget people in the purchase funnel into those product categories. I don't think going as broad as they are really is gonna be successful for them. And it's gonna cause the kind of problems that you see in their overall traffic levels um, for this site. And kind of tying into that, if we actually look at their overall success on Hrefs, you can see their backlink growth is actually pretty flat year over year. And in the last couple of years, if we go down the full timeline, it's actually completely flat. It looks like it's slightly trending up. Maybe they started and stopped, but I would bet the mediocre content quality that they have, and also maybe they're not being delivered about link acquisition, is contributing to that overall issue of flat backlink growth. Um, over time and likely also their flat organic growth as well. As you can see, it's pretty stagnant, if not close to zero in terms of growth, and it actually is down in the last two years, which I think pretty much neatly ties into their flat backlink growth um, as well. And that all ties into co the content quality and people wanting to feel like they can reference these things passively that I could think um, can affect them. So in looking in more best practices, their URL structure is not ideal. You can see in here, if they're trying to rank for camping tips and techniques, having Camp Cabela's in there just adds no value whatsoever in actually helping them to do that. And likely this has something to do with their backend, their content management system. This is one of the issues is once you become Cabela's and you've been doing this long enough, there's such ingrained uh, enterprise issues that make it difficult to change this. So I know it's not as simple as, as their team just changing that URL in order to make a difference here. But it's at least worth noting that their overall content and URL structure is not ideal. Camp Cabela's is in almost every single URL. And if they could get the topic and the keyword closer to the front, I think that would highly impact their ability to rank. And yes, it would be a relatively decently sized change, but I think uh, it could potentially, if, if, if executed correctly, be worth it in the long run um, for them. Another thing about their content generally, it's just not very scannable or high quality. It's pretty mediocre. I'd grade this as like a D, if not worse, if I'm being honest. The only reason they, they have any kind of success with this, if they do, is because of their brand and because people recognize Cabela's um, overall. But you can see in their campground etiquette, pretty thin article, not scannable, one boring image at the front. It doesn't stand out. These share images are outdated, if not broken. And that's not, gonna create a positive experience. 
And also they're not pushing to a shopping experience in this situation as well. You can see they at least could push to a camping section, like shop camping at the very end. I think that potentially could help them and get more actual value out of this, like we saw in the Dick's Sporting Goods example in our last in our last example. REI does a great job of this as well as actually showing the calls to action mid article with buttons as well. But that thing I think is gonna cause um, them issues and likely not drive value from this, which in turn could be self compounding where they don't wanna keep investing in content marketing because they can't clearly see the ROI, but maybe they're just executing it incorrectly at the core. A, a better example, this is not some well-known brand, it's book your campsite. You can see the same topic it's just better done. It solves for quick answer, best practice. You can see in this example, uh, unlike Cabela's, Cabela's just said camping tips. In their example, they're actually applying some content marketing tie-in. They're using a odd number title. There are some studies that have shown odd numbers for whatever reason do drive more clicks on average. Another thing you can see here is they say all campers should know. You can tell if you're a camper and you don't, you only know eight or so tips or six, you might be compelled to click this as compared to a title that just said camping tips. I wouldn't be that compelled to actually click that title. They're smarter about it. They drive the click because of that. And if we go further, they do a better job of creating a scannable article for Google and quick answers. They, Google could extract this because it's a more easily understood hierarchy compared to the Cabela's example, which had no hierarchy at all. You can see they work off the H1 here. This is an ideal, but then they get pretty quickly into a one, two, three, H2 structure, which is easier for Google to understand and pull into a quick answer. And also for users as well, they can scan down this list, find something they don't know and not have to think about doing it. You can see the difference in aesthetic as well. It's more scannable, paragraphs are short, there's bold, uh, there's good images in there. They're not amazing by any means, at least, but at least it makes it more compelling on average than that Cambella's out article. So you can see this is a more useful, well done article on average. It's not like really expensively done by any means, but it follows a lot of best practice. You can see they even do a good shopping call to action at the end, which likely drives real value for them as compared to Cambella's who doesn't have that setup um, for their site. And then finally looking at another article that they're trying to rank for, which is how to tie a top line hitch I for sure don't know how to do this. So if I'm Googling this, uh, I'm, I'm looking for several things. So you can see in this article generally, they just have a one by one to seven list of how to tie that hit, that, that knot, and with an image of how it should look. And this is just, again, non-optimal. It's a thin article. It's not rich in any way, and it's not giving us many steps or ways to learn how to do this. So if I'm Cabela's or I'm a content marketer, one of my activities for understanding content marketing is to Google that keyword in that topic and see what rich media formats are being displayed on the search result. This list will actually inform what media types we should have on our own articles. So in this not hitch example, what we're clearly seeing in the search result are video examples. So Cabela's does not have a video. That's clearly the number one thing people want is a video of someone doing this, which is easier to understand versus a very simple text-based list. It, some, most people are not narratively gonna think that way when thinking about how to tie a knot. And that's gonna make them a pretty poor result overall. So if you keep going down, uh, you can see more images here, which is a decent signifier. But if we get to page two, we see right on the edge, there are actually also images of knots as well. So another way that they could potentially solve for this is by having a image illustration step-by-step -step breakdown of what these would look like. So maybe someone's inside or it's a quiet area, they might not have the ability to watch a video or they prefer to just look at the diagram versus having to start and stop a video every time. That's a different learning format that people want because you see it on the search result. It is page two, so maybe a little bit lower in importance, but it's still there. So in, if they had analyzed the search result, they would know the best practice for an article like this is actually to have a video and also to have step-by-step -step images of the different steps for both user types that might want that. The text doesn't hurt. Sure, it's great to have the text for someone who can't listen or 
look at the video, the images, but definitely the images enhance the text and make them a better result. So in scanning the search results, under, understanding what the search result is telling us, we can do a better job from a content marketing standpoint and Cabela's can be more successful overall. So that at a high level is, is my thoughts on Cabela's. Not the best content marketing strategy ever, if I'm being honest. I know likely it has a lot to do with enterprise issues that make difficult, make changes difficult to make, but you can see on some of the articles they're in general thin. Someone there is saying, let's publish every day or something like that, which is just clearly not working for them and is legacy issue for that brand. So I think there's a path to turning around for them, but hopefully you found a, a few lessons in here useful. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and let me know what you thought.